short update, we are very happy with the development of our um, new session, the 3 to 4 session. Kahapon, may data Okay, up. Another gender first. Uh, may request another gender to be our leader. Kasi, walang, wala, hindi kasi nakalagay slice ito yung mga verses. Eh. Para lang mas mabilis yung um, ano natin na yun. So, from the roots up, there is what we call um, fruit, fruitless religion. Our text is based from Mark 11, chapter 11, verses 12 to 20. If we can please read that. Mark chapter 11, verses 12 to 20. This is actually the big thing. About the big thing. Mark chapter 11, verses 12 to 20. On the next day, when they had left Bethany, he became hungry. <coughs> Seeing from a distance a big tree in leaf, he went to see if perhaps he would find anything on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples were listening. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple area and began to drive out those who were selling and buying on the temple grounds. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry merchandise throughout the temple grounds. And he began to teach and say to them, Is it not written? My house will be called the house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard this, and they began seeking how to put him to death, for they were afraid of him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. And whenever evening came, they would leave the city. As they were passing by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots up. All right, thank you, Brother John John. So, as you can see, based on sa pinasa natin na verse, what's it natin dito? The fig tree gave all the signs of fruit, just like the temple. Bakit? Di ba nabanggit dun sa text natin? Si Jesus na lumapit siya sa fig tree, bakit siya lumapit? What? Yeah, he's hungry. So, anong hanap niya? Yung fruit. Fruit ng fig tree. Okay, so he was from a distance. And then he approached the fig tree, expecting to find fruit. Why? From a distance, it will make you think na, wow, maraming putas to. No? Ganun yung rikinig siya. So, the fig tree gave all the signs. No? Parang maraming putas. Just like the temple. At that time, di ba, bago pa, bago pa, uh, yung after na nilapitan ni Jesus yung fig tree, ang kasunod na ginawa niya, di ba, pumasok siya ng Pero ang titignan mo sa labas, parang the temple is busy, parang the temple is full of activity. But if you go inside, only to find out na ang pagka-busy na yun ay hindi pala dahil sa spiritual activities, kundi dahil sa ang daming nabibenta. Commerce. No? So, kumbaga, there's a religion, pero it was a fruitless religion. Okay? Bising tignan, Pero fruitless, wala, wala naman. It, it is not profitable in, in the expected um, fruits. No? So the tree was cursed. The temple was cleansed. Okay? So the tree was cursed. Bakit? Wala. wala. At, that, at that point, he did not, or it did not serve the purpose. No? It's supposed to yield fruit. It's, suppo it's supposed to serve as a source of nourishment para sa nagugutom. And yet, it did not do that. And so, Jesus cursed it. From now on, wala nang makakain ng putas galing sa iyo. And, yun nga, after sa nangyari sa temple, namatay. Namatay yung fig tree na yun. Okay, so tulad ng, tulad ng sa temple na nangyari, na nangyari, Jesus cleansed everything that has nothing to do with the temple. Why? Wala naman yung kinalaman eh sa activities na sa spiritual activities lahat ng mga ginagawa sa temple ay yung mga bagay na hindi dapat ginagawa sa loob ng temple yun yung nangyari dati okay? so kung baga para saan ang temple na yan kung ginagamit na parang Shopee, parang Lazada ang 
nangyayari, parang tampon, parang tabuan ang nangyayari. Okay? Para saan ang damit nun? Kaya Jesus cleansed the temple so that it will serve its purpose. What is its intended purpose? With the ultimate goal of actually bearing fruit. Okay? Kasi at that time, the temple was not bearing fruit. What kind of fruit do you expect from a temple that was being used for commerce? Okay? So, there's spiritual decay or spiritual life. All starts from the same place. Sa verse 20, nabasa kanina ng ating kapatid, and the big tree withered from the roots up. No? Mula sa gamot. So, ganun tayo, ganun din. No, that we were we were witnessing or we are reading about a physical decay ng fig tree but the same principle applies to our spiritual lives okay what does it mean what does it mean for the spiritual decay from our roots up will you immediately notice it okay so if you din na din yan kung yung pag decay yung pagkamatay ng fig tree ay nagsimula from top to bottom will it be obvious? Will it, I mean from top to bottom kung nagsimula sa itaas nagdikay siya from top hanggang sa bottom will it be obvious? Yes. yes versus it, it, will be, it will start decaying from the root up ganyan po yung spiritual decay okay so what's the lesson here? we should always keep ourselves in check brothers and sisters because spiritual decay may not be as noticeable even to ourselves we may be sitting here right now siguro kasama ka namin kasama ko ako ninyo sa pagsasamba ko yun and yet dahil nga ang decay ay ang sister nila from the roots up it is not okay you will not, you will not know na ako ay isang spiritually decay person I will not know if you are a spiritually decayed person, but there will be signs. There will be signs. Just like the fig tree. Okay? Sa fig tree, nalaman na ng mga apostles na kasama ni Jesus, na decay na yun. Kasi nung binalikan nila, totally patay na yung whole structure. Okay? Ayaw natin na ganun ang mangyari sa atin, mga kapatid. Na paglingon natin sa isa, isa natin mga kapatid, o pagtingin natin sa sarili natin, we were so far. Sa kung ano expected from a Christian, Patay na pala tayo, hindi natin alam. Kung baga, sa salita ng ano, we, we, are, we are walking corpses. Parang mo yun ah, walking dead. We are walking dead. Naglalangat tayo, pero hindi natin alam, patay na pala tayo spiritually. Inside. Okay? So that's, that's our lesson um, today. So, pag-aralan naman natin ngayon, what are the conditions that lead to, fruitless, uh, to fruitfulness para Kung malaman natin na ang mga ito, it will become some hints, clues, kung paano natin i-replicate, i-duplicate, para tayo, tayo din ay maging fruitful. No? Sa Bisaya, mabungamon. Ano uh, diba? Okay. Plug in tayo. <clears throat> so, number one, how do you become fruitful? Number one is we have to cultivate deep roots. Again, ang alihil ko, brother John John. <coughs> John 15, Verses 1 to 5. Alin ang usubay ka mo sa sinuha ka mo? John chapter 15 verses 1 to 5. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, but must remain in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Okay? Thank you for that. So basically, kung titignan nyo, hindi naman talaga nag... nag it is, the verse wasn't talking about actually having deep roots kasi kung napapansin niyo ang illustration niya the Christian was supposed to be a dependent branch to the vine that's not exactly 
taking good kasi branch siya eh. Diba? Pero the principle is yung gusto natin pakaralan. Gusto natin kunan ng lesson. Bakit? Sa nabagit dito, how do we cultivate the roots? Number one, we should be rooted on the right ground. Okay? We should be rooted on the right ground. Again, alam ko, is, hindi siya as matching, pero kung titignan ninyo dito, sa, sa specific na verse na ito, the branches, the individual branches, which correspond to us individual Christians, we will need to be attached, we will need to root ourselves into the true vine. Otherwise, ano sabi ni Jesus? Kung hindi kayo sa akin nakatas, wala kayo. You will never bear good fruit. Why? Um, physically speaking, it is on the galing sa main na vine, kumukuha ng nutrients ang branches, right? So natural, kung ikaw ay naka-attach sa isang mali na, let's say, soil, or let's say, branch, or vine, Or how, how sure are you to get the appropriate nourishment that you need? Okay? So, number one is for you to be rooted in the correct soil or into the correct vine. So, check yourselves. Am I right now rooted in the correct vine? Am I rooted in the vine? If we are Christians na totoong ginusto natin na tayo ay magbunga, dito sa spiritual na mga buhay natin, then that will be the first step. Siguraduhin muna natin na tayo ay rooted to Jesus as the main vine. Okay? Psalms 1, uh, I think that there's only five verses for Psalms chapter 1. <clears throat> so, Psalms 1, Blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by springs of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Okay. So in John chapter 15, we were talking about the need that we should be rooted into the right vine, into the right soil. But the question is, how exactly do we do that? That verse did not talk about actual actionable steps, no? So dito, in this place, sa Psalms 1. So, paano pala natin nagagawa na tayo ay maging rooted? If we meditate on His Word sa ganung paraan. Okay? Kasi baka may mga nalilito. Okay, naiintindihan ko na brad. Kailangan ko maging rooted kay Jesus. Pero papaano? Papaano? So, sa John 15, na-explain lang naman dyan, illustration ng vine. O eto, Psalms 1 explains it. Then, ang paraan is to meditate on His Word. What what are you actually doing if you constantly meditate on God's word? Okay, this is actually connected to our past lesson of how the Holy Spirit dwells in us. No, it, it is actually connected uh, to to that lesson. So, if you constantly meditate day and night on God's word alone, then expect there will be manifestations of His word. Bakit? No, na magagaling. Your decisions will be guided by what you learn, by what you meditate upon. Okay. Your discernment, uh, ito, this is good, this is bad. How could you tell? Because of the words that I meditated on constantly. Okay? Bakit, bakit ito yung decision ko? Bakit hindi ito? That's based on the word that I meditated on. So, ganun po ang maging, or ganun po ang paraan para tayo maging rooted in Jesus Christ. Okay? Simple? Kaya gawin? Kaya? Okay, kaya, di ba? Psalms 119, verse 36. Psalms 119, verse 36. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to dishonesty. Ayun. Incline your heart to my testimonies. As we all know, 
that the testimonies of Jesus were already recorded. Palagi ko pang i-emphasize sa aking mga online sessions. They never to look for other sources of doctrine, other sources kung saan mo ipabase yung, yung, way, yung spiritual way of life mo. Only based it on the Bible. Because the Bible, if you haven't realized it yet, is the written record na iniwan sa atin ng Panginoon. So, incline, incline ourselves in the testimonies, which is nandiyan na at, uh, sa written record na yan. Okay, ano ba? Hindi pwede na, okay, may, may, may roots na. Hindi pwede na ipag, isasantabi natin yung iba pang mga bagay na importante for growth. What else? Number two, eliminate the weeds. It's okay, Brother John. Luke 8, 14. This is the parable of the sower. So, there was... Uh, there was this batch of seeds that were sown on the thorny ground. Tama? Okay? And sa, alam, sa nalaman na natin, those thorns became the reason why the seeds that grew up were choked. Pag choked, hindi tumuloy sa pagtubo, sa pagpag-grow. And because hindi na tumuloy, naturally hindi din nagbubunga. So what is the most magical thing to do kung gusto mo yung seed na yun that is implanted will, will, will grow up in their roots, remove the weeds. Okay? Remove the weeds. Anything that becomes a hindrance for you to bear fruit, okay? To bear fruit in the work of God, remove that. Tanggalin natin, hindi pwede rooted na ako, o sige, nagbabasa na ako sa word of God, pero wala kang tinanggal sa sarili mo na mga ibang bagay. Remember, the thorn was competing. Okay? The thorn was competing with the growing seedling. No? As, as what we can read in Luke 8.14. And of course, uh, needless to explain, when I say competing, it will become your distraction. With an A. Distraction. You will be distracted. You will never have focus. Hindi mo, hindi ka makapag-commit na ito yung gusto kong gawin para sa aking Panginoon. You can never do that. Why? Ang dami sa, sa gabal, sa gilid. Oh, the spiritual weeds. So, dapat natin tanggalin muna ngayon. If you really want to grow and bear fruit. Matthew 5, 29, verse uh, 30, Brother Chandra. Matthew chapter 5, verses 29 to 30. Now, if your right eye is causing you to sin, mm. tear it out and throw it away from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into the fire. And if your right hand is causing you to sin, cut it off and throw it away from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Okay, thank you. So when Jesus spoke this, of course he did not mean that literally. Although meron mga extremist na dahil gusto nilang gawin ito, talagang pinuto nila yung kamay nila kasi yun daw yung naging cause ng pagkakasala nila. Pero, the fact that Jesus made use of this illustration emphasizes the urgency. Okay? The fact that He used exaggeration emphasizes na ganyan ka lala, ganyan mo kanil na iwasan yung mga bagay na yan. Up to the point na kung, sabi niya, na kung kinakailangan, alisin ko yung mata mo. Kasi yun yung naging dahilan kung bakit ka nagkakasala. Kung, ta- kung kailangan putulin yung kamay mo, kasi yun yung naging dahilan ng yung pagkakasala. Gawin mo. Kaya, hinamit ni Jesus yung technique na yan, na, uh, ayan, language something, no? Figure, uh, exaggeration. Kaya yung hinamit na ganyan. Figurative language, if you're right. Okay? Because ganyan ka urgent. Hindi pwede, ah, okay lang, next time, I will do better. Hindi. Dapat urgent. Kaya na tayo may mga nababasa ng mga verse sa Bible, no? Kunyari, on youthful lust, anong gamit na specific term doon? Flee. There are so many words like that na talagang sobrang sobra ang diin na ibinigay kasi it's supposed to be urgent and we are supposed to understand that. Okay? Eliminating our spiritual needs has that urgency. Okay? All the more sa panahon natin ngayon. Dato pa alam naman natin na the life is uncertain. Okay? Pero on the onset of this Delta variant, mas lalo naging uncertain ang ating buhay. We never know hanggang kailan tayo. So kung hindi mo, if you will not get rid of your spiritual weeds right now, when? 
kailan mo ikokorek yung mga kailangan ikorek sa sa spiritual life mo, sa spiritual life ko. Kailan ko gagawin ang mga expected na gawin sa akin. Okay? So it has to be now. It has to be now. Kasi hindi natin alam kung, kung buhay pa tayo bukas. Okay? What else do we need to do so that we will be fruitful? Embrace God's pruning. We will not read John 15.2. It's actually just the same from the verse we read above. But it was talking about those that uh, bear fruit, God prunes. Okay? Sa mga hindi nakakaalam, this is a agricultural term where it is the uh, training of the parts because uh, ang goal ay para magbunga, lalong magbunga. Ganun. So, isipin natin, kunyari, ikaw yung branch. No? Ikaw yung branch. No? Pag ikaw pinutulan ng bahagi para magbunga, nakakatuwa ba yun? Is it, is it joyous or is that painful? Tapin painful. Ha? Pruning is painful po. Okay? Let us remember, pruning is painful. But God has a purpose. God has a purpose why He's doing pruning. Why? He sees you as someone potential of bearing fruit. Okay? And that's why He prunes you. Kaya lang, many of the Christians do not understand that. Okay? And to the point na the pruning experience becomes uh, uh, an avenue for them to question God. Instead na, Lord, Thank you. Thank you for counting me worthy of this pruning. I understand that you gave this to me because you want me to um, around even further sa aking pagbunga sa mga gawain mo. Okay? Instead of having that mindset, that mentality, ang nangyayari, Lord, bakit mo po nadadala ng mga problema ganito? No? So, again, let us be aware na may mga pruning na mangyayari sa buhay natin. And we should embrace that we should love that pruning kung gusto natin magbunga. Dito sa picture natin, grapevine, that is, that is one of the best techniques na ginagawa ng mga vine dressers para lalo pang dumami ang kanilang mga harvest na grapevine pruning. So, same, same thing with us, speaking spiritually, if we want to bear more fruit, then let us embrace God's pruning. Okay? Um, let us continue. So, tanong naman natin ngayon, what am I producing? We have already learned, okay, ano yung mga kailangan kong gawin? Okay, Brother Jay, I have decided, gusto kong magbunga, gusto kong maging prosperous sa gawain nito ng Panginoon. Now, the next thing will be assessment. Sa ngayon, what is your current state ngayon? What are you producing? What are you producing in God's vineyard? Are you producing leaves? Okay. By, by leaves, ano ang ibig sabihin yan? Sa James 2, 14 to 17, we will not be reading that. Pero, this is talking about the the faith and works, the dynamics of faith and works. Okay? Are you producing works to um, justify your faith, to prove your faith? Or parang panlabas lang ang nangyayari? Okay? Parang panlabas lang ang nangyari. Tulad nung, tulad nung binasa natin kanina sa John 15, di ba? In the first place, why why did Jesus approach the fig tree at that time when he was hungry? Bakit? Nung tinignan niya, uy, ang daming dahon, green na green. For sure, may bunga to. May mga ganyan. Okay? So, for Christians, titignan mo, ay, ano si Brad, ano si Brad? Walang, walang absent, no? Maraming nandito. No? May mga ganyan. Kung tingnan mo sa panglabas, okay sa panglabas. Okay? But kung tulad ni Jesus, when He finally approached the fig tree, tinignan niya yung mga dahon. Take ka, puro dahon ng palato. Okay? Nasa ng butas. Nasa ng butas. Or, speaking a bit collectively, gaya natin, local church, we've always had um, Assemblies like this, Sunday assemblies. We've always done gospel meetings. Meron din tayo mga online sessions. You might be always present to that, but hanggang saan yung gina- ginawa mo? Are you only at- at- attending? Or did you actually actively participate and contribute to the activity? Magkaiba po yun. Magkaiba po yun. 
Okay? Hindi inak, hindi inak na nag-aattend tayo. And we have been emphasizing that please do not get me wrong. Importante po ang mag-assemble as a ang brethren. Kasi that's what we're strengthening ourselves. Pero parang saan po ang pag-strengthen ng spiritual life natin if we would not put that into practice para may iba naman na makinabang sa edification na yan. Hanggat, hanggat we kept that our hanggat we kept what we learn for uh, to ourselves lang and we do not share that to others sino lang bang maliligtas? Tayo lang? Wala na tayong ibang magdadala? Pero, di ba, kung natatandaan nyo sa past lessons natin It is still a sin. It is still a sin if you do not share why there was a command. That was one of the greatest command of Jesus before He ascended to heaven. Go and preach. Again, alam ko, paulit-ulit ko naman sinasabi, pag may command, may expected na obedience. At hanggat hindi mo ginagawa yun, that is a sin. For sin is the transgression of the law. Okay? Tandaan po natin yan. So what are you producing ngayon? Ngayon, tayo na nakaupo dito ngayon. Are you producing leaves? Or are you producing fruit? What do you mean, Brother Jay? Can we read Brother Jan Jan, Romans 16, 1 and 2? Romans chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. I recommend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church which is at Centria, that you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and that you help her in whatever manner she may have need of you, for she herself has also been a helper of many, and of myself as well. Okay, so nakita niyo. The example in this one is was Sister Phoebe. Okay? She was individually, you know, this was not in a, in a assembly setting, you know, Individually, as a Christian, outside of the assembly, she was very active. She was always contributing. That's why Paul wrote na give her the assistance, give her the support that she need. So that yung mga ginagawa niyang proactive na contribution para sa church ay mag-prosper. But the thing is, that is the proof that we need. Yan ang mga prutas na hinahanap natin. Actual actions that will contribute to the growth of the local church to the growth of the body of Christ. In Acts 9, 39, we will not be reading that. Same thing with Dorcas, with Tabitha. Okay, yung nakatay, na binuway ulit ni Peter. Same thing. She was known, when she was alive, she was known to be a woman who was very aggressive in the work of God. Ang dami niya natulungan. So these kinds of groups are what we are looking for in the local church. Okay? Kasi, um, this is a painful reality, but Baka, baka naman at some point of our lives, of our stay here, we have also asked, bakit na nanatili tayo sa ganitong dami? We have been worshiping for how many years? How come, ganito, ganito pa rin more or less ang ating ang, ang numerical, you know, ang numbers natin? Bakit ganun? So, have you asked that? Have you asked that? Well, because dati, maybe we were reluctant to go out And that's, and that's why we did something about it. We planned, okay, we had the YCT trainings, and then now is the time of implementation. So, we were provided with the training we need. We were provided with the knowledge we need. Question, what did we do about it? Did we make full use of it? We bought Zoom, we bought tools. No? We, we are already equipped with everything that we need. The next question is, what did we do? We can still never bear fruit <laughs> unless we actually grab those that are provided and put them into use. Okay? So, what am I producing? Leaves, meaning, I merely attended. No? Pero kung fruits, I worship. Okay? Napanggit ko dati, no? Pumunta ka dito, pero sa pag-awit. Di ba? Remember, we are individually priests. Okay? Pero, yung sacrifice na in-offer mo sa Panginoon in terms of pag-awit, hindi man lang bubukay yung bibig mo. Sa pag-pray, hindi ka man lang nakapokus. Sa pag-aaral, natutulog ka. Siguro sa pag-officiate ng Lord Supper, minsan, I'm not saying always, ha? pero minsan, because of in, uh, negligence or something, nakabulog yung elements, may mga ganyan. 
Di ba? Ang mga priest dati, ang ating counterpart na priest dati sa Levitical priesthood, they were really careful in, 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 the, in the sacrifice that they offer. Why? Alam nila na sila lang yung qualified na gagawa nun. They are the only ones who can, who can actually offer acceptable worship. That's why sa every little parts na kanilang ginagawa ng worship, nagtikuloso sila doon. Importante sa kanila. Okay? Tayo, we are the spiritual counterparts ng mga Levites na yun. We should also be as appreciative and we should also be as careful and we should not be as negligent sa ginagawa natin na duty. Kasi nga, tayo lang po ang natapagbibigay ng sacrifices na tinatanggap ng ating Diyos. Okay? So, again, don't merely attend. Don't merely sit there. Okay? When you are when you are told to stand up and sing, sing. Sing with all by word. When you are asked to preach, then preach. Prepare for your preaching. Make sure na pag-preach mo, pag-uwit naman natin sa'yo, may nababakot sila. May natutunan sila. Hindi yung nag-preach ka nga for the compliance. Ikaw mismo hindi mo na-intibinan yung preaching mo. Hindi pwede yung ganun. Okay? Tapos kung nag kung lead ng prayer, make sure na lahat kasi na kaya mo leader eh. You represent the local, or the local church, you lead. Okay? So if you pray for the elements, make sure that you serve that purpose. When you handle, um, you know, gospel meetings or online sessions, make sure that you serve your purpose. Yun yun. Do not offer leaves. Make sure na my fruits. Okay? Ano ba? I'm in and out. Yun. Punta dito, 9 o'clock. Punta dito, 11 o'clock. Labas. Okay? So instead of that, I stay encouraged. How do you stay encouraged? Listen. Huh? Listen. Sa tuwing may mga sa work, acts of worship, uh, sa mga acts of worship natin, especially sa mga studies natin ito, try to learn and then make use as your fertilizers para, para mag-grow tayo. Okay? Try to stay encouraged. Bakit? Alam na po natin na compared sa ibang mga denominations, boring na matatawag yung worship natin. Tapos, yun nga, ikaw pa mismo, pagdating dito, tutulog ka, hinasok ka, you allow yourself to be tempted like that. Okay? It is your obligation to stay encouraged to, to keep that fire burning. Hindi ko kami ang gagawa ng para sa iyo or kayo ang gagawa ng para sa akin. Individual responsibility po natin yun. Next, I read the Bible. Okay, hanggang dyan lang ba? Apply. Okay? I talk that Christian life. Oh, dapat, ano tayo? Hanggang, hanggang, hanggang dyan lang ba? Why not live it also? No? Both here and outside and in the society. Okay? And to conclude all of this, brothers and sisters, our Christian lives is full of challenges. Okay? As uh, the last week, I watched this movie sa Netflix yung nga, uh, Paul the Apostle. Okay? Ako, I always know that there was persecution before sa panahon ni Nero. Pero nung na-visualize, actually sa sa mga nakita ko, grabe, ginawang kandila yung mga Christians. No? Grabe ginawa nila yung pagbila. So, ganun yung persecution sila ngayon. Sa atin ngayon, wala tayo. Pero, ibang form naman yung tribulations natin ngayon. Nandito yung virus. Okay? There are many hindrances na um, nag, nag, nag-hinder, nag-attempt na hinder tayo sa mga dapat natin gawin. Kaya, napaka-wise ng Holy Spirit. Mga first century pa, sinabi na niya, kasi, he is expected that the life of a Christian will be full of ups and downs. Kaya, Paul let this encouragement to us and let us not grow weary of doing good. Bakit? Matagal man, matagal man, pero in due season, we will reap. Okay? Pero may condition. If we do not give up. Okay? Pag give up tayo, ang dahil lang sa Delta variant na to, anong maririp natin? Wala. Wala. So, let us push for them. Okay? Let, and, and, let us pray. Normal lang po ang matakot. Okay? Normal lang po ang matakot. Normal lang pala lang. But, always remember na may mas makapangyarihan. Na hanggang tumatawag tayo sa kanya, kayang-kaya niya alisin lahat ng to. Kayang-kaya niya. Okay? Kung natakot man tayo, mas dapat malakas, mas malaki yung pananalig natin sa kanya. May kumakalat niya na post sa Facebook, no? Why would I be afraid of the Delta when I have the Alpha in my God? Very true. Very true. Why would I be afraid of the Delta when I have the Alpha in my God? Correct. Thank you.
Thank you so much for your attention. And I hope may uh, uh, natutunan tayo sa mga ngayon.